It's not okay for people who drink and drive to run into other people and to kill and maim and injure people. When you see that car crumbled, that's violent. I get pretty outraged when people say, it's an accident. It's not an accident. And it's something for law enforcement to say, it's not okay and I will make a difference. What we have to do is change the mindset of law enforcement officers into looking at this crash as more than just a motor vehicle crash, but a crime involving a motor vehicle crash. The law enforcement officer has to understand that if there is a crime, there is a victim. It's important and imperative for other officers to be very compassionate when they're approaching victims of a, of a DUI incident. Having a law officer or a sheriff or an agency member be with us to be able to talk to is really huge on a list of things that are needed uh, when a violent crash like this happens. As law enforcement, we have to take our time and listen to the victims, making sure they're got all the assistance that they need and follow up with them. That law enforcement officer really becomes the first person that victim sees. That victim is going to want some reassurance from the officer. The victim is going to want hope from the officer. And when he or she opens up to us and gives us information or makes it available so that we have it, it makes all the world of difference. DUI crash victims and their families definitely are victims of a crime. Mark and I were college sweethearts. When Mark was hired by the Baltimore County Police, we made Maryland our home and had three children. We had a good life. Mark was a detective in an undercover unit and his captain had asked him to fill in the week between Christmas and New Year. It was just two days after Christmas and the crash happened not long after he had gone on duty. A drunk driver was leaving a bar on a busy road and turned right into Mark. They drove me to shock trauma and essentially the whole left side of his body was broken, as well as having a severe head trauma. He was there a total of 25 days before he finally succumbed to the injuries. The victim advocate was invaluable and reached out very quickly after Mark's death as to what they could provide for the kids and I. Just knowing that there was support I think was so just reassuring. It's important to let them know that there are resources out there. They're not alone. There are many needs that aren't going to be able to be addressed by the police officer that will be able to be addressed by our victim assistance coordinator. Our relationship with a victim begins whenever we're called by law enforcement typically or when we receive that referral. The victim support network is pretty invaluable and I think it is helpful if the officers are able to reach out and remind the families of that sometime afterward that this support is out there for them. The victim can reach out to us if they need referrals, if they need some assistance, even post-sentencing. And essentially knowing we weren't alone was, was very helpful. When I was working midnight shift, there was a female uh, that was a victim of a DUI crash. This person 
exceeding the speed limit, re-entered her vehicle, and her vehicle spun around and she ended up laying on the ditch. She was at the hospital getting treatment for her injuries. Once I finished with my investigation, I went back to her room. She wanted to talk to somebody. She was devastated. Went to the hospital a couple times and to visit her. She was there for about three or four days. Once I sent a subpoena, she contacted me. I took my time and explained to her what the subpoena meant and uh, what she needed to do and uh, just help her out th through the process. During the trial, she was able to testify and uh, he was convicted. There was a penalty for what that person did to her. It's important that law enforcement officers understand when they walk into that scene, they're dealing with a victim whose life has totally changed in a split second. I work in the Wind River Reservation, which is in central Wyoming. There was a major vehicle crash. The victims that I provided services for were coming home from a financial seminar. They were rear-ended by the defendant who was driving at excessive speed, very intoxicated. The victim just held his wife in his arms before she died. When we arrived at the emergency room, he had knee damage, he had a punctured lung, I believe a, a few broken ribs. But his level of devastation was tremendous based upon what he, he had just had to experience with his wife. Part of my responsibility to the family is providing those referrals for counseling for the children, for the victim, for the other family members. The key link between the victim and these programs is the law enforcement officer. Responding officers can recognize the physical injuries and the emotional trauma that victims go through. The financial injury can be just as important if they can't pay for their medical bills, if they've lost wages, if they need help paying for funeral bills. Crime victim compensation programs in every state are eager to provide information to those who respond to victims. For the victims of the family, it's so important to have all that information. They may need to explain it more than once because depending on where you are in this process, you're not always retaining it. In addition, the state handles the federal government money through the Victims of Crime Act, or VOCA. Law enforcement agencies can seek this funding to support not only the efforts to provide immediate information to victims, but also that crucial follow-up care that may help the victim at a later point down the line. All of us are, are going to want to hear that they're, that they're not gonna be forgotten they have the same needs, whether it be a property crime or a personal crime versus a DUI crime. It's the same victim with the same needs. We look at the person in front of us and think that's the victim. And while that may be the main victim, there's a host of people behind that one person that we never see that are impacted. And that extends out to families, to friends, to co-workers. It is endless as to how many victims one DUI collision can create. The ripple effect permeates indefinitely. Even now, years later, when there's another drunk driving crash or incident that I read about, you know, it still hits home. There is so much that a law enforcement officer is tasked with doing, but dealing with victims has to be the most important. We have to remember that somebody else is hurting, somebody else needs our help. Be compassionate to the victim and do everything you can do to make sure you bring that DUI driver to justice.
My rallying cry to law enforcement officers would be, take one drunk driver off the road at a time. And those that we can't catch, at least when you make it to that crime scene, when you make it to that crash scene, make sure that you do your job and you do it well. Make sure that you build a case against the criminal and do it for the victim. <laughs>